This avalanche topic covers sappy overview. Let's take a look at the overview of sappy. There are multiple protocols that you can test natively within the avalanche L4 through 7 feature. Just by selecting the server profiles tab, you can select the type from the pull down menu, whether it's a multicast, an FTP, an HTTP server, quickly and easily. Just by selecting it from the pull-down menu, you then will create that type of server. However, P2P applications are not natively supported within Avalanche. The Avalanche L4-7 through application provides you with two methods of non-native protocol support. SAPI, which is the Scalable Application Playback Emulation Environment, or Capture Replay. Both SAPI and Capture Replay features are not used to capture data. They are used to play back data. The SAPI licensable feature provides you with the ability to configure, modify, and magnify virtually any application layer network traffic and is perfect for P2P traffic generation. SAPI allows you to inject custom, stateful, and proprietary protocols into a test alongside standard supported protocols and attack traffic. We're looking at the license management screen of a Spiron test center and you must have a SAPI license in order to use SAPI. SAPI is easy to use, easy to scale. Its expandable protocol library provides a dynamic library of pre-made protocols for specific test cases. The PCAP import wizard automatically builds test configurations. SAPI provides manipulation of the original PCAP information, both at the packet level or at the timing level. The ability to create and play back your own application protocol over TCP. It also provides you with the ability to play back any number of PCAP files in any order. You can create a SAPI test configuration using the import PCAP wizard. Once you have identified the PCAP that you wish to read in, once you launch the wizard, you would go through the steps and eventually you would end up creating a test configuration that supports the PCAP file. It will automatically build all of the SAPI elements necessary to run the test. However, you still will have to go in and modify some of those elements before you run the test. You can create a SAPI test configuration using one of the tests contained within the SAPI protocol library. There are many different SAPI library elements available to you, and the blue font means that they are read-only. So really, before you would use one of these, you would copy them and then modify them to meet your needs. This slide displays the unique SAPI elements. We've already discussed all of the elements required to run traditional tests from a client side and from a server side. Now we will take a look at these additional elements that are necessary to run a SAPI test. The SAPI folder is the main folder housing all SAPI resource directory, playlists, and streams, and is accessed from the SAPI sub tab. So from the client, Actions tab, you would select the SAPI sub tab, and then from there you will see the SAPI resource directory and then the library resource directory. And then underneath that, in this case, you will see the two session resource directory as well as the two session playlist and then two streams underneath that playlist. The SAPI playlist defines where and when to send the content as well as how to play the content once it is called within the SAPI URL list. Now here we are looking at the two session actions list and within that it contains the SAPI URL. You'll see the call SAPI and then it's calling the two session resource library and then it's calling the two session playlist. Once again, that playlist in this example defines two streams that will be played when the test is executed. 
A user can create a playlist consisting of different playback files and sequence them. You can use a loop. You can retrieve playback timing information. You can change the sequence of packets. Now, if you do use a loop, please note that there is no conditional processing within this environment, meaning that you can loop something, but in this case, you would loop it 10 times. You would not loop until something. The SAPI editor allows you to modify packet data. You will launch the SAPI editor from the SAPI stream viewer. If you click the editor, that will launch the SAPI editor. Now from here, you will be able to go in, insert packets, copy packets, delete packets, as well as create and insert variables down on the bottom portion of the editor. Here we are looking at the SAPI editor, and in this case we have one stream, and that stream is made up of three different packets going in the different directions as shown. Once again, you can create a custom stream if you'd want to. This is down at the bottom, but you would have to go in and type in in the ASCII editor the values that you want that stream to contain. A SAPI server is required for each stream in a playlist. Let me say that again. A SAPI server is required for each stream in a playlist. In our example, we have two streams. Therefore, when we created this test, we would require two different SAPI servers, one for each stream. In our example, the first stream points to the to session underscore one SAPI server. And if you look within the playlist properties of that server, you will notice that it calls in the stream that is identified on the client side as well. So basically both sides, the client and the server, know what's going to be sent and received using SAPI. One SAPI session contains all of the streams in a playlist. Now, in our example here, we have two streams within the two-session playlist. When we run this test, you will see that there was one attempted, one successful transaction, or one attempted, one successful SAPI session. If there were 10 streams within a playlist, still there would only be one attempted and one successful. Now, when we run this with hundreds of thousands of SIM users, you're going to see many attempted and successful transactions. However, what I want to stress upon you is that one session contains all of the streams within that playlist. The Enable Client Server Packet Trace parameter from the Run Configure tab is not part of SAPI or Capture Replay. That is something totally different, and we discussed that previously within the training. Let's take a look at SAPI results. Avalanche SAPI test results reside in the run monitor screen. This is the live real-time results. The client runtime stats button, which is live real-time results. The client summary.csv file on the disk. The client and server realtime.csv files on the disk and the server sappy underscore summary dot csv file on the disk. Here we're looking at the run monitor screen. The left side is going to be for the client and it contains sappy traffic sessions. How many sappy traffic sessions? Once again, one session contains a playlist and that playlist contains all of the streams within that playlist. The right side deals with TCP information. Therefore, if you were to run this SAPI test using UDP, you would see no information here on the server side. If the SAPI playlist contains multiple TCP-based streams, then the SAPI session count will be lower than the TCP count. Okay, that means one SAPI session could contain multiple streams. So on the right side, we would see 
the number of TCP connections, but on the left side we would see the number of SAPI sessions. Now if we clicked on the Client Runtime Stats button, we would see that we have access to the SAPI results. SAPI throughput in kilobits per second, SAPI playlist per second, and the SAPI active playlist. The client summary.csv file allows us to get some SAPI information as well. From the results tab, you would highlight the test that you want to look at the results, and then you would click on the client summary view button. From here, you could select the SAPI summary, and this is going to give you rolled up numbers for the total attempted playlist, total successful playlist, as well as total unsuccessful playlist. You could also view the interfaces or the user profiles. Once again, that will give you the URL information and the numbers associated with that URL. Now the client real-time CSV, you would select the client real-time view button and then you would view the real-time statistics within the analyzer. The client realtime.csv file contains the following SAPI unique elements. Active playlist, attempted and successful playlist per second, throughput for transmitting and receiving, good put, cumulative receive, average minimum maximum receive, cumulative send, average minimum and maximum send rate, as well as the Ethernet SAPI send and receive information. From the server side, Avalanche does not provide SAPI results within the server runtime stats or the server summary.csv file. For the server realtime.csv, once again, from the results tab, highlight the test you want to look at. You would select the server real-time view button, and then you would have access to the real-time statistics. Here, you will notice that the server real-time CSV file contains less SAPI unique elements than the client side. Here, we only have access to the good put information as well as the Ethernet information for SAPI. However, there is the SAPI underscore summary dot CSV file that contains server results. This you would have to access from underneath the server subtest for the particular core and then you would double click on the SAPI underscore summary dot CSV file. This will present for all of the SAPI servers that were created on that core rolled up information. The IP address, the ports, total attempted sessions, total successful sessions, unsuccessful sessions, aborted sessions, as well as latency information. Additional resources. The following additional resources are included in this topic. The Avalanche SAPI document. This document provides additional detailed information regarding SAPI. The topics include peer-to-peer -peer applications, SAPI overview, basic SAPI test configuration, SAPI results, and SAPI test modifications. Now we've gone over some of the highlights of SAPI. However, this document contains more detailed information, for example, within the basic SAPI test configuration, it will walk through an entire test configuration. In addition, we have three lab simulations. The Avalanche SAPI PCAP test lab simulation. This lab simulation provides you with hands-on experience configuring and running a SAPI test by importing a pre-existing PCAP file. The SAPI Library Test Lab Simulation provides you with hands-on experience configuring and running a Skype test. Now, this test is contained within the existing SAPI library. You will configure SAPI using the Skype element within the 
SAPI library. And then finally, there is the Avalanche Modifying SAPI Test Data Lab Simulation. This lab simulation provides you with hands-on experience modifying the data of a previously created SAPI test. This will show you how you can actually go in and create a table to modify the data so that each sim user will pull different data when the test is executed. Thank you. This completes this topic.